Hi everyone and welcome to today's uh, workshop which is on exam preparation. Um, in the year that's in it, exams have been really reduced in numbers over the last few months um, to allow for kind of at distance learning and safe assessment. But there are still a fair few exams that are happening and exams are happening in lots of different forms. So I think this um, workshop is as important as ever and hopefully will give you some insight into what exams will look like uh, this year for online learning and what techniques you can use to help in your exam preparation. Uh, today we'll be covering time management and planning, revision, past exam papers and exam strategies, but also I'll be highlighting all the kinds of changes um, that might be occurring at the moment in terms of exams. So, um, I feel like I'm missing some slides. Um, oh no, they're coming. Apologies to everyone for that slow um, things. They've just gotten a bit jumbled up, but we'll start off with um, time management and planning. So um, in terms of time management, um, if you haven't started preparing for your exams already, there's no better day than today to start. Um, so uh, it might seem like a bit of a daunting task to start, especially when you have lots of different assignments. But the best thing you can do is have a look at what needs to be done and start making a plan around this. So uh, maybe um, some new assessments have come to light in the last few weeks. I understand many module coordinators have been um, um, informing you of assessments in a stepwise manner. So make sure you take stock and find, figure out exactly what assessments you have left for the year. What are assignments? What are exams? Um, and when are they? And you might want to start looking at preparing a clear timetable and to-do list for each module. So setting it out really clearly so you know exactly what you have to do and when you have to do it. So when you're planning your study, um, try to think about the most appropriate times to study. Sometimes that can be the case that it's um, during daylight. Uh, one of the best times to study is when you have natural light coming in, when you're at your most awake and you can get a lot done. But I totally appreciate that this year uh, things might be slightly different. So you might have quite a busy household, maybe, you know, at peak at three o'clock, which might be your peak time for studying. That's when maybe brothers or sisters or kids are coming back home after school and it might be a very busy time. And maybe you find that nighttime is the only time you can really have um, quiet to study or in the mornings and then you might need to just um, switch those things around just to make sure that you can have the best study time possible for you. It's also really important to utilise the time between classes. I'm really delighted to hear that loads of students are using their time between classes really well. Now that they're um, online and you know they're, they're not on campus and there's not really any distractions between um, classes, lots of students have been telling me that you know if they have an hour between two lectures or 10 minutes or whatever it might be, they are staying at their desk and continuing to work and getting a few things done. This is absolutely perfect and a really good way to make the best use of your time. It's really important that you set up your study space in the best way possible. So they should be organized and easy to use. You should have your study space set out with all your notes and study materials, you know, nicely organized in folders based on the module and the topic. And um, that means you can find anything when you need to. And the great thing is now that we're not so much in the library, you might have a bit more space to spread out or maybe you don't say that, but you know, in the library, you're really limited to your one little um, slot, but now you can spread things out and make sure you have enough space for all your books and your notes. The at-home study space is definitely tricky to find and difficult to organise, but some tips would be, you know, trying to make sure that you are keeping your study zones and your relaxation zones and your sleep zones completely separate. So, for instance, studying in your bed is not good for study and it's not good for sleep, so try to keep them separate. I understand that, you know, we all live in busy households, or a lot of us do, and um, so it can be hard to find a study space. But even if you have to study in your bedroom, make sure that it's, a, it's, it's really not in your bed, I suppose, and it's a separate space that is dedicated to study. This will help you study better, it will help you sleep better and relax better. 
um, try to keep your space clutter free. So, you know, um, no, not a stack up of cups of tea or anything like that. Uh, and not other things from other aspects of life. And um, it's completely clutter free and ideally you should be away from movement if that's distracting to you. So, for instance, maybe looking out a window isn't the best strategy um, if all the movement outside um, distracts you. Make sure you have all your tools you need for study so that you're not getting up and walking around the house. It can be really tempting when you're in the house to just kind of plump down and start into your study, but you really need to make sure you have everything you need. So your notes, your pens, your laptop, your water, whatever it might be, be sure you're ready to go before you start study so that you don't get distracted needing to go find things around the house. And if noise is an issue, um, maybe headphones will be helpful, um, particularly noise counselling headphones, ideally with absolutely no sound at all. But for some students to have, you know, white sound in the background can be really useful as well. But I would try to avoid music. So now to revision. And this is the slide I was looking for earlier. <laughs> so here it is. At the moment, um, we, there's a lot of open book exams um, that are uh, happening for students and are on their timetables at the moment. And that's quite a new concept to a lot of students and it can be a bit confusing. Um, is it an exam? Is it an assignment? How would I revise to it? It's certainly very tempting when you have an open book exam to just prepare um, uh, for or not to prepare in the same way you would for a closed book exam or a traditional exam, because it can be really tempting to count down the fact that the answers are nearby and accessible. But I would advise that you should revise for that exam the same way you would any exam. And the reason is that during the time constraint that you have with an open book exam, it's unlikely that you'll be able to look up a topic and find the answers. This is particularly true if it's a topic that you're unfamiliar with. Think about how many hours and, uh, and days you can spend getting familiar with the topic. If you haven't done that already, it will be very, very difficult to do so in an exam. So really, you need to revise for an open book exam the same way you would for a closed or traditional exam. I would recommend organising all your resources for quick reference. So this is a part then of your revision. And as you kind of look at your notes, you can condense down the key information into easy to read notes, which you can just reference very quickly during an open book exam. Some things that I would think would be appropriate to include in that might be equations and formulae. So obviously, don't spend your time, um, you know, um, learning off these kinds of things when you could just have them to, at your fingertips during an open book exam, but you do need to be familiar with how you would use them uh, because that's something that would be quite time demanding. You might use some memory aids and um, some things that will jog your memory and remember you, remind you what you want to write in your exam. Um, you might include um, some references. I remember it being very difficult to remember references for exams. So maybe a keyword and what that reference is um, would be a nice thing to have on your quick reference notes. If you have essays, you might want to do a little mind map around the topics you'd want to cover that can prompt you to remember what um, paragraphs you need to include. Or maybe if you're a science student, you'd like to have a periodic table close by. All of these can be really um, great to have nearby in an open book exam, but it's really important to remember that you do need to be familiar with the topics. Um, otherwise, it would just be very difficult within the time frame. So then another type of exam that's coming up at the moment are take home exams and they are quite similar to an open book exam, but with more flexibility. So it is quite confusing all these new types of exams. With a take home exam, what would tip it away or uh, kind of give you an indication that it's a take home exam would be that you would have hours or maybe up to a week to complete it. So, for instance, you might find you have an exam where you have 12 hours to complete it. You should not feel obligated to spend every hour and minute on completing that exam. It's just to give you flexibility. I think the most common kind of take home exam is about four hours. And mostly I would say that the expectation would be that you'd spend two hours that you normally spend on that exam. And then it's two hours to like upload and make sure you can get it off and over to the lecturer or the examiner and 
within that time frame. So the time is there for flexibility and not a target. This is again true for one of those take home exams where you might have a few days to do the exam. It's to allow you to have time to do it within your house where you can find a quiet time, but it's not that you're meant to fill that time. If you're all unsure about how long you should actually spend on the exam, and what the expectations are, I recommend you contact your module coordinator immediately for further clarification. As they have set the exam, they can advise best. So now let's look to revision. And it's important to remember that a few weeks ago we did a um, we did a workshop on revision, and that's available on the Brightspace as well. So you can look in on that if you want to learn a little bit more about revision in depth. But at the moment, we're just going to do a little bit of a quick run through again. So when you're revising, what do you need to do? Well, you need to firstly review the learning outcomes of the course. What are the main questions to be answered in this module? What can you identify the key points for every lecture and class? And do you need to seek clarification um, on any of the content? Now is the best time to seek clarification. You don't want to leave it to the last minute. Lecturers are uh, understandably uh, experiencing a high volume of emails at the moment. So it's a really good idea if you can to um, to seek clarification on content as soon as possible. Um, so another point on revision is um, that it can be very handy to actually go back to the course description, any handbooks that were given or the introductory lectures to get an overview of what it's expected of you in this module. Uh, as you go through the module, it can be you know, easy to forget what was actually the core point of that module. So it's a really good place to start is going back to the beginning and figuring out exactly what was required and expected. And um, this, uh, these materials should set out your goals for the module and give you a structure to work with uh, regarding the topics you need to cover. And just again, as a kind of um, a, a reminder of what we covered in the um, revision workshop, you can use a number of different um, methods for revision. So maybe you're quite a visual learner and you might want to use flowcharts, diagrams, mind maps or images to help you with your learning your learning. Maybe you're an audio learner and you might be using podcasts, the recording of lectures that are up on Brightspace, or even audio notes where you record your you describing the material and then listen back to it. All of these things can be really great if you're um, somebody who learns through sound. And to remember that you, there are lots of text-to-speech software available, both for iPhone and Android, and you can check them out on the slides that will upload afterwards. Similarly, lots of people learn through conversation, um, and that can be a little bit trickier at the moment. So this is where students find if they can discuss the topic, it helps them learn and remember the information. It might be that you want to discuss it with your friends or family who you live with at the moment, or maybe you want to set up a little bit of a Zoom call to discuss it with your friends from college and your classmates. Um, this can be really good and it's important to remember there is still way, there are still ways of doing this even in a remote environment. But really the best way that most students learn is through their own notes, whether they're handwritten or typed. Um, so this is really, mo for most students, their first port of call is going back to those notes in conjunction with the lecture notes. And you should be aiming to um, condense down these notes as part of your revision. So you kind of start with everything and then as you learn it, you can condense it down and down and down into more of the key points. You might consider making revision cards or flashcards, um, which contain the key topics on each point. Um, and then you can use these in your spare time to really a uh, quick reference and revise. Um, We've lost some. I'm having a, definitely a day of uh, difficulty with the um, the slides, but just to say that um, it can be really useful as well to um, test yourself on your exams, and um, you can do this through a number of ways. But the best thing is that it really, if you can quiz yourself and with the book closed, you know the answer. Well, then you really do know the answer, and you're ready for a test. 
Um, as well, it can be really useful to design your own questions because that means that you're engaging with what the core information that you need to learn is. And um, so sorry that that slide's missing, but that's the overview of it. And it can be really important uh, or a really helpful um, app for that or web app is Quizlet and I know I covered this in the uh, revision lecture but just to remind you that Quizlet is a website and app that can be used to quiz you on your own um, learning. I have there some of the amino acids um, and it can give you little quizzes very similar to the kinds of MCQs that a lot of, a lot of students are doing at the moment. They have quizzes um, already created on lots of different topics as you can see this one's on protein um, but you can also design your own quizzes so I think that would be a really great exercise for anyone who has like a lot of MCQ exams is to kind of design your own MCQ to practice study with. Now um, so then what do you need to do um, when you're looking at you know summarizing what topic of a module is? Well, you can look to the module description. You can look on Brightspace and the resources that are there, class notes, lecture slides that the lecturer has uh, given you, and past exam papers. All of these five things together will give you a really good idea of what the um, what should be covered in your own summary of each topic on a module, and to see what's important and what comes up from year to year. So you might create a little summary sheet for yourself. And in those summary sheets, we've given here some ideas of what you might include. You might include definitions, key points, important terms, maybe a mind map for an essay you would write on that topic, different, you know, little memory aids that you might have, some past exam questions and maybe your own questions. But you can change this depending on the uh, requirements of your course as well. So now on to past exam papers. Past exam papers are one of the best tools for when you're studying. You'd be very familiar with these if you've recently done your leaving search uh, or your mocks, I should say, as well. Um, and, you know, exam paper prep is a huge part of study um, in second level and it can be in third level as well. So it's really important to remember that there have been a lot of changes this year though to assessment. So it's worthwhile checking in with your lecturer and seeing is there going to be any structure change to the exams? Have any new topics been added in recent years? Because you might be looking thinking oh that topic never comes up but maybe it's just a new topic. And have any topics been removed? Because sometimes you look at exam papers and you'll see something that you have no idea about. But maybe that topic Topic has been removed in recent years so it won't feature on your exam but particularly this year because there have so been so many change changes it's really important that you link in with your um, module coordinator to ensure that you are and um, that the past exam papers are reflective of and um, what the exams will be this year and then all the exam papers are available to students on the SysWeb. So you can um, enter in then, if you go onto SysWeb, pop in your UCG student number and your password. It was probably previously the date of birth, you probably changed it at this point. So you can log in then using your password. And you'll find on the SysWeb there's a section up the top which is registration fees and assessment. Sorry, this picture isn't very clear, but you'll click on that top tab up in the top um, left hand corner. And then on the list you'll find past examination uh, questions, question papers. And if you click on that, you'll then um, see all the modules that you are taking. Um, and you can then click on them to see past exam papers for them. And then you can, you'll see a list of the, the exam papers that are on record and you can have a look of that, at them. And you'll see, and I, I imagine the papers will appear slightly differently, but the information should be the same as in previous years. So here's an example of an exam paper in UCD. It'll give you information such as, you know, how much time is um, provided for the exam and what are the instructions. And these are both key pieces of information. So you want to look at as well in, in, in past exam papers. Um, what are the instructions? How many questions do I have to answer? 
Often there are a few options of questions, so make sure that you're reading the instructions and figuring out exactly how many questions you have to answer. How many marks are available for each section? So are they equally marked, equally weighted, I should say, or um, are they, um, is one worth more than the other? And that will help determine how long you should spend on each question. So for instance, if you have to do two essays, if they're both worth 50% of the paper, then you should spend 50% of the time on each question. But if one question is only worth, you know, um, 25 marks and one question is worth 75 marks, then you should only use a quarter of your time for the first question and three quarters of your time for the second question. And it's a really great idea to start practicing answering those exam questions under exam conditions. Again, don't fall into the temptation that open book exams um, are any different really to closed book exams. You're still going to be on the clock for, those, for some of those open book exams. So make sure you practice it under exam conditions. And the advantage of it being at home is it'll be under exactly the same conditions um, as you will be doing the actual exam. So now let's look at some exam strategies. So what happens before the exam? I think you've taken by now, my advice really is, it's quite similar to um, you know, a traditional exam. So before the exam, you should briefly revise your summary sheets and look at those key pieces of information you wanna have fresh in your head for the exam. But don't look at any new material on the day. That can be really overwhelming. Um, so it really isn't worth it. Make sure you've done all your preparation for the exam before the day of the exam. Um, it's a really good idea to get a good night's sleep if possible before the night of the exam. It can be very tricky. I remember many a year where I couldn't push. It's really worth it um, rather than pulling an all-nighter because your brain just isn't primed for the exam the next day otherwise. Um, and be organized on the day of the exam. And this is more important than really ever before. Maybe we don't have to travel to the exam period and time buses, but we need to guarantee that we have a quiet space to do the exam and give yourself enough time to set up. I'm in a terrible habit at the moment of um, rocking up to Zoom classes, just um, not lectures, obviously my own kind of private classes, um, just as a time for the class to start. It's so tempting when you're on the computer to just open up the computer um, at the exact same time as you're about to start something. Make sure you're in your seat and in your quiet space for your exam, good time and that you have everything you need there. So what would be your pre-exam checklist? It can be still helpful to have pens and a notepad because you might want to do some rough notes, you might want to draw something, you might want to do a little um, you know, mind map or something. So I'd still say have some pens and notepads handy. Have your calculator handy if you need it. Have some bottled water. You don't want to be getting, or a glass of water. You don't want to be getting up to get refreshments during your exam. Have your watch handy or a clock so that you can keep to the time. Um, make sure you have your quiet space um, and, you know, I think a, a sign on the door saying quiet exams in progress is totally fine. And make sure you have your laptop to do the online exam with the charger. And this is so important. Make sure the charger is plugged in. Um, and if at all possible, I'd say as well, make sure you're as close to the wire, the, the broadband as you can be so that um, you can have the best connection possible for your exam. So then it's up to you to start reading the exam paper in the exam. First of all, read the exam paper in full. That's a really good investment of time. Um, and if you have any choice of questions, take the time to read and understand each of the questions before making decisions. Sometimes you can look at, you can just jump to one question, see a keyword, go on going with that. But really the other question you could actually do better on if you just gave it a few minutes to kind of understand what the question was asking. It can be a really good idea to underline keywords in the questions to aid your focus and um, to remind you of what exactly is being asked. Make a note on the instructions. So um, exactly what are you required to do and what are you, uh, what are you going to do? Then when it comes to timing your exam questions, I was saying this a little bit earlier on, but make sure you understand what uh, marks are being allocated to each question and then write down exactly how much time that means you should uh, give to that question. 
Um, and it can be so tempting in any exam situation to spend more time on the question that you know more for. And at the end of the day, um, that might not result in any better grades, and particularly if it detracts time from another question. They can't, even if you wrote the most amazing answer possible, there is a limit to the number of marks you can get on a given question. So make sure you spread your time across the exam paper to maximize your marks. Um, and then any additional time um, should be spent, you know, across any questions that you have to answer rather than, you know, answering an additional question. So taking on an additional question late in the exam often won't have any benefit. So I would put more work into the questions that will be counted and making sure they are as good as possible. So here's an example of the instructions that you might see on an exam paper. So here you can see that the paper is asking you to answer three of the four questions. So one you can discount and you must answer all parts of the question. So you can't pick and choose from subsections of that question. Um, it, you probably get instructions on how you're to submit the work. And um, so it's very important that you're aware of that. Is it on Brightspace? Does anything additional need to be attached? And um, those will be outlined in the instructions. Um, as you can see there, it says this is an open book exam. You're, you're allowed to use notes and, um, you know, it cal calculators are permitted. Um, so that's really important that you read the instructions for candidates, which is yourself. It's really important as well when you're looking at questions that you can understand the question. Sometimes it, you, your eye just goes straight to the key term in the question. You go, great, I know all about photosynthesis, I'm gonna talk about it, or you know, I've studied this. But actually, what, what is the question asking? So that you can make sure you address the question. So we have some um, examples here, and I'll put these slides up afterwards so you can have a, a more of an in-depth look. But for instance, if a, if a question asks you to compare and contrast, you must discuss the similarities and the differences of two or more items. So it's really important that even if you know maybe a lot about one item in a topic, that you are comparing and contrasting, that you are including both what makes them similar and different of two items. And if you just discussed one, um, or maybe just discuss the similarities, and um, that wouldn't be sufficiently answering the question. So there's lots of different examples of these kind of keywords that are often featured in questions. So I'd encourage you to look back on these slides and have a look and make sure you understand what each of them means. And um, so I have them there across a couple of slides that you can go back to. Um, it's really important that if you are answering a longer answer question, such as like an essay in an exam, that you take time to maybe draw a brief mind map or bullet points or a plan of how you're going to uh, attempt that question. Um, it says here actually to hand up your rough work, that might not be possible anymore, um, but it's really important for yourself to just make that plan and um, just to know where you're going and to keep you on track and you can tick off items as you go. So if you are doing an essay style um, answer, or answer, you can look back on our writing um, workshop, which we did earlier in the year, and get some tips on, on writing for our academia. Make sure you have a very clear structure. I cannot really stress how important a structure is. If you have all the content there, but it's not in a very logical order, it can be very difficult to correct that kind of essay. Um, and really um, emphasizing your point and kind of linking it back to the question and linking each point to the next is really great. Um, and it will definitely I, I improve your marks in a given an exam because it's so much clearer that you understand the content content. Um, use short, clear sentences to avoid grammatical errors. Um, you don't want to be going off into run-on sentences. Make them as clear as possible. And there it says, write as leg legibly as possible. But of course, we'll be typing this year, so that's all okay. Um, and then when you're reviewing your answers, have a check back and check about spelling, word choices, um, omitted words, obvious mistakes, um, such as using a, a, you know, a misspelling of a word to change the meaning of the word, such as hyperattention to hypotension. Um, check for your names, your dates, 
that you have the correct question number um, put on it and you probably won't need to put your name and student number on anymore um, but that that's all correct um, and if you have the refer to grading guidelines support from access and lifelong learning that um, you're applying your digital stickers that is including that information that you are eligible for that support um, and if you have any questions about that to contact access and lifelong learning. The beauty about having online exams is that it's really easy to correct for these kinds of errors. Uh, it's really easy to add in a word that you missed out or change the spelling of something or change a word around. Um, so make it, take advantage of um, your online exams and make that work for you. How to pass your exams. If I had all the answers, that would be amazing. But here are my top tips for how you can pass your exams. Do the required preparation. Exams, a lot of it is in the prep. So it's in making sure that you um, have studied something, you're familiar with it, you've put in that work. Exams actually take quite a lot of time with all that preparation. Um, seek clarification from your lecturers. That is what they're there for. They're there to answer your questions. So make sure you go back, ask them if anything's unclear, put it on the message board on the forum. There are, you know, I think sometimes it can be intimidating to put questions on the uh, message boards and on the online forums. But really, if you're having that question, so many other students are having that question. So please do put it there and um, you can benefit all of your learning. Ensure that you answer the required number of questions. So make sure that you're fulfilling the requirements of the exam and, and make sure you give yourself time to do so. Ensure all you've answered all the necessary sections. So sometimes if a question has a lot of um, subsections, it can be easy to miss, miss one. So maybe go back on the exam paper and just tick it off and make sure you're, you're all okay. Uh, it might be clearer this year with the online exams uh, but just make sure you're okay with all of that. Stick to your timings. Um, I understand there's a bit more flexibility around timing in some situations this year with open book exams but other than that you know um, an online exam that has strict timing can be quite unforgiving so we'll just kick you out so make sure you're sticking to your timings so you can finish the exam. Um, explicitly answer the question you're asked. Don't beat around the bush. Show them that you are answering the question. Um, avoid repetition of material. We've all fallen into this trap before, but try to just make the point once and make the point well and to not uh, repeat on a material again and use all of the time available to you. So um, a question I get quite a lot of among students is, if I can, can I leave early if I'm finished my exam? But I would say, try to use all of the time that you have. I remember a, um, a teacher of mine once told me it was for leaving cert biology and she said, you only have three hours to show them everything you know. And I think in that mindset, um, you can achieve some pretty great things. It's that you know a lot and this is your one shot and you are limited in the time you can show off in. So you use all of the time that you have to show off. And then plan for the day of the exam as well. It can be totally natural to feel some nervousness before an exam, particularly an online exam where it's quite new to us still. Um, so don't uh, worry about that too much. And that is a very common feeling. Um, plan to do something relaxing after your, uh, your exam. So take the night off, stick on the crown, whatever it needs to be um, to relax. Uh, probably not the most relaxing show now that I think about it, but uh, maybe the bake off. Um, ensure you get a good night's sleep sleep before an exam as best you can. Make sure you're, you're clear on when the exam is. This is really important. Put it in your Google Calendar, set, put sticky notes on the fridge if you have to, whatever it might be to remind you when the exam is. Um, have the family get involved if you need it and set up for the exam in good time so that you're not rushing around the house trying to find the laptop charger five minutes before the exam starts. During the exam, make sure you read the paper and establish what are compulsory and optional questions. Um, make notes on the timing and what questions need to be done. Underline the keywords. Decide what questions you're going to do. Make a plan if it's a longer question uh, and answer. 
and check then at the end that you've answered all of the required section and review your answers with any time you have left over. So that is our exam prep workshop. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, maybe after this workshop you'll consider like is there anything that you're going to do differently, maybe something you hadn't done previously like making um, summary, summary sheets. Um, maybe you might look at what plan you'll have for your exams as well and maybe think about what tips you would like to, uh, you know, you would share with others and maybe follow your own tips as well. Um, so that is today's exam a preparation workshop. It is the last workshop of um, this trimester, but we will be back next trimester for a new range of topics every lunchtime Wednesdays at one o'clock. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat box there and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, other than that, we'll, I'll hang out for a few minutes, um, but uh, please feel free to, oh, there we go. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording.